Sandra. Welcome to another episode of Asexualized, My Asexual Life. This is a place to be for education about asexuality, all things asexual. I share my own asexual life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button right now, right down below this video. Please hit that bell icon to get notified of every time I go live right now, post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying any of the content as we go along. If you didn't know who I am, I am Sandra Bellamy, author of this beautiful book, Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories, Love, Life and Sex, A Celebration of Asexual Diversity. I'm also the founder of Asexualize.com and the founder of Asexuals Academy. Welcome to tonight's episode. Well, before you condemn me for talking about sex for five hours and you're like, why are you asexual? Why are we talking about sex on this channel? Like we have enough of that already in our lives. You know, we don't need it again. I understand your plight. OK. And I explain myself. OK. Asexual Guide to Sex is the next asexual book I am working on. It was originally called Asexual Sex Stories, but that is now the subtitle. So Asexual Guide to Sex. Why am I writing an asexual guide to sex? The reason I'm writing it is because there are lots of asexuals that will try sex at some point in their life and it's very 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 scary for them they don't know what they're doing they're inexperienced sex doesn't come naturally to them it's not something they think about you know there's lots of asexuals that don't ever want sex in their life and I'm really happy for them and I love you guys to bits you don't need it you don't have to have it I'm not saying that at all right? The reason I'm specifically writing this asexual guide to sex book is because I know years ago, I didn't know I was asexual, but I knew that I was different. And, you know, I did have sex for the first time and I didn't even think about sex before then. I didn't have much education about it at school or from my parents who are very conservative about this type of stuff. And, you know, I, I really basically didn't know, what the, know anything about sex. It was the guy who was leading all this stuff because I didn't know what I was doing. Do you know what I mean? And now I've got experience over years of being with heterosexuals. And, you know, I know there's there's people I get in private message who I say, who are scared to say to the world, sometimes I do want to try sex. You know, I've met someone and I feel I might want to give it a go. And they're scared because they don't want to be frowned upon. Like, why do you want sex if you're asexual? If you don't experience sexual attraction, why would you want to try it? What are you doing that for? And it's very... It's very damaging. It's, it's like saying, well, you can't be asexual if you have sex. It's, asexuality is not about whether you have sex or not. It's not about your behaviour. It's about whether you experience sexual attraction or not. And I didn't understand that myself for a long time. So if you're kind of thinking now, well, that's wrong. It's a load of rubbish. I do understand where you're coming from because my mindset back in the day in 2014, when I first started on my asexual journey, I didn't understand that. But I'd had sex. I didn't get that. But I looked to my own life and I'm like, you've had sex, Sandra. You didn't know you were asexual, but you still had it, even though you were asexual. So you can't say to other people that, why are you even thinking that way? And I didn't understand the difference between arousal, sexual attraction, sexual desire. I thought it was all in the same bundle. And I was very, very naive back then. I was very uneducated, uninformed, and I didn't know really all the different things. So to be, you know, if you're aroused by something or, so, you know, it is, with asexuals, usually if you're aroused, the arousal doesn't lead to actually wanting to have sex as an innate need you know as in like I'm aroused now I've got to have sex with you you know like the arousal is more disassociated from from the act of sex right and and you can get it on your own or do things with yourself without anyone being involved some asexuals fantasize about sex even even though they don't want it in person you know in reality and asexuality is such a huge spectrum you know and Sexual attraction is when really you get the need, urge, or want for partnered sexual intercourse. Sexual desire is very closely linked to sexual attraction, but it can be separate because you can desire the sex itself. So sexual desire is a desire to have sex in and of itself. Most people who have sexual desire also have sexual attraction, go hand in hand. But you get those people that sometimes, you know, at nightclubs saying, I just want to, I've come out for sex tonight. I want to get laid, you know, I hate that word, but that's the terminology they use because it means they want sex with anyone and everyone, right? And there are a few asexuals that could still that I have heard that could still desire sex, but they don't want to do it with anyone. It's like they desire the sex itself, which is really weird because they don't experience sexual attraction to anyone. So there's not one specific person they think, oh, I'd like to have sex with, but the sex itself is desirable to them. That is hard for me to wrap my head around, but that 
I have heard that. You know, I've known people in groups that have said that about themselves. So I, I can't say it's wrong. And I do understand that the sexual desire can be separate to sexual attraction. Although most people use the words even that asexuality is a lack of sexual desire as well because usually the full definition of asexuality is a lack of sexual attraction and or little to no interest in sexual activities which would cover the desire part as well so you'd have usually the lack of sexual attraction and low sexual desire or no sexual desire in in do you know what i'm saying so why am i saying nearly five hours of sex talk it's not what you think right so because of my asexual guide to sex book it, it you know i'm interviewing people for it. i've i've got 14 interviewees that will be in the book but i'm still talking to them and in discussions with them about the book and about the questions so there was a set of questions i set to sent to them when it was just going to be called asexual sex stories the good the bad and the fugly it's not called that anymore it's called asexual guide to sex how to have sex if you're an asexual will probably be linked onto that title but asexual guide to sex is the main going to be the main title for definite and then underneath is the subtitle of asexual sex stories hi uh, asexual sex stories, um, sex advice, sex gu guidance and sex help. And it's specifically aimed at asexuals, but also would be very, very relevant to any any um pe anyone who's who's thinking about having sex for the first time anyone who's a relative of an asexual anyone who's a friend of an asexual anyone who is even thinking about trying sex for themselves even if they're not um asexual you know they they um could use this book if they've never had sex before but it is aimed at those asexuals who want to try it for the first time despite not feeling any sexual attraction because i really want to give them a full picture of the the good things about sex the the things that people find bad about it what to expect from it what to do what to say oh hi barry you're 16 oh bless you barry the sonic king i love your name um so yeah um this is a channel for asexuals, by the way. Asexuals lack sexual attraction, but I'm just explaining about my new book, which is an asexual guide to sex um, for asexuals. But obviously, other people might want to use it who have no ad sex. Thank you. Do you like Sonic too? Um, I used to play a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog years ago, but I don't, I'm not into video games. But someone gave me a Sega Mega Drive, and so I played a bit of Sonic back then, a little bit, but I'm not really into video games. So, um, but thanks for asking. Um, so yeah, so basically the five hours we're talking last night was interviewing someone for my book over Skype. So one, so what I've done since my book is called, um, now called Ase an asexual, asexual guide to sex. And what it is, I've given my interviewees 19 more questions to answer them. They're very, very difficult questions. Um, People belittle you if you never had sex. I think they're very immature anyway. Yes, Heather, that's correct. You don't have to have sex. But this, and, and I don't want it ever again in my life, but I'm just saying that this book will um, will will be um, helpful to people, um, you know, that do want to try it for the first time ever. And I just want to let you know that last night... Um, since I've sent the 19 questions off, people, you know, even the interviewees are struggling to answer the questions because they're very, very difficult questions. But they are questions that I wished I'd had when I was a virgin, if I'd realised I was asexual and I was thinking about having sex for the first time because it's very, very scary, isn't it, if you've never done it before, you know? And there are those asexuals that are have got a partner who's not asexual, they're sexual. They're asking the asexual um, for for if they want to have sex and the asexual might want to try it you know and this book is to help them make a form just informed choice and decision whether they want to or not so it's not a book that's saying you've got to have it or should have it as an asexual not at all it's the opposite it's saying do not have it until you have read this book and uh, you haven't had a girlfriend yet barry are you asexual or are you heterosexual um because asexual is absence of sexual attraction heterosexual obviously means you'd be attracted to the opposite gender if you're a, really a guy because I don't know what gender you are oh you're straight meaning um you can get straight asexuals as well but if you I, yeah heterosexual I'm guessing you mean um you're a boy attracted to girls only right okay 
Um, thank you for confirming that, because obviously on the internet, you don't know who you're talking to. People call themselves by different names. So, um, so yeah, so actually you probably benefit from the book as well when it comes out. I'm hoping to get it out before Christmas. So that's a big, big order for me because there's 14 people to interview. I'm still going through their, their interviews with them. So last night, this is why I'm saying I talked about sex for over five hours, because last night I interviewed someone by Skype who wanted to be interviewed. Um, he's asexual. He's in the book. Um, he's he's uh, He says in the book even, he gives some details, like he's 23 from Israel. And you'll be seeing uh, his personal story, and it's amazing. And I interview him do Tim for the book so he'd answered the first set of questions but I wanted to expand on some and the rest of the 19 questions we sat for hours together talking about um you know his personal story to do with sex and to do with advice and guidance as well and you know for him to share his own story because he really wants to help other asexuals out and other people that are struggling in this area that don't know what they're doing that are fearful he really wants to help them like I do you know he spent over five hours talking to me about this all the all the details of you know how it made him feel as an asexual how difficult it was for him you know um in terms of physicality because when you're asexual and sex doesn't come naturally to you because it's not something you really think about doing because it's not something you get the need urge or want for then um then you know it is a question of you know you have all these fears about you know what do you do with your hands where do you position yourself how's it gonna how's it gonna happen how's it gonna be are you going to like it? Are you not going to like it? And, you know, this is like all the like notes that I made for his personal story. You know, there's quite a few there. Um, I've got to type up tons of it. And so we were literally talking and I wanted to thank um, this person so much. I mean, I can reveal their name because their first name's in the book. Their name's Adam. And, um, you know, I was so happy that Adam has has a very great vision for this book as well as helping as many people as possible because this book is different to any other sex book on the market. For a start, it's written by asexuals. You know, it's we're all asexual. We lack sexual attraction. We don't in general get the need, urge or want for partner sexual intercourse. Well, there are people across the asexual spectrum. So there are grey asexuals in the book as well. But, you know, it was I, I just related to this person so much when I was talking to them and they were sharing their personal story with me. And they've given such good advice in the book and they've really like help you to see what it's like to get into the minds and, and feelings of an asexual, in you know, that's different, you know, because obviously we, we feel differently about sex because I'm hetero romantic. I'm not heterosexual. So I'm hetero asexual. So I'm attracted to guys, but romantically, like kissing, cuddling, I don't want sex with them. You know? So if I have sex, for me, it's different. I don't experience it like a heterosexual would. I don't think it's wow. I don't think it's awesome. I just think it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? And I'd rather be doing other stuff, to be honest. But it was really, really nice that we had this all this discussion. I mean, they really thought about all their answers, as you can see. I've got to type them up. I've started doing it already. And, you know, this is why we're having a discussion for over five hours to help you guys out, to help you. You know, it was like in his country, it was like 4 a.m. in the morning. He set three hours aside. And by the time we finished, it was nearly six hours. We were like talking for about five hours, 15 minutes on the book. And they're another half an hour, over half an hour, just talking um, because we could really relate to each other, you know. And so this Asexual Guide to Sex book is, I truly believe, is going to be the best book about sex you've ever seen in your life. And the irony is it's written by asexuals who don't experience sexual attraction. And the great thing about this book is because it's us that have written it, you know, it's it's a unique take on sex like no one will ever have seen before in their life. And it will open up all the minds of all these people that don't understand us, that don't get how we feel about sex, that don't understand how we're different, how it feels to us different, how it how the act of it is for us, how we'd rather be thinking of doing other things. We're thinking about other things because sex is not a big deal to us. It doesn't mean much to us in the in the physical sense do you see what I mean and so I just think this book is going to be absolutely incredible not just for asexuals but in getting asexuality recognized throughout the globe you know as 
as a serious sexual orientation that we are completely different. It shows it. It's not just us saying, well, we think differently about sex. We don't like sex. It really, really goes into the minds of all the different people in the book. And you can see through through the words of the people in the book how sex is different for us, how we feel about it, how it's different, how how we think about it differently, how it is for us when we, we we're trying to do something that's not natural to us. And I just think that's sensational. I've never known a book like it. The more the more I I are working on it, the the more I think there's there's nothing out like this. There's nothing out on the market like this. There really isn't because it goes into in depth, very in depth, reflective things that no other book does because the other books are clinical. They're very clinical. They're they're, they're very clinical. Some of them are coachy. They're all written from obviously a heterosexual point of view. They're not written from the point of view of an asexual. They're not written as in the good, the bad and the ugly about sex, you know, and a lot of those things are relatable to people who are inexperienced at sex, who haven't tried sex before, who don't know what they're doing, you know, and it really, really helped. It gives so much advice in the book about what to do in terms of preparing for sex physically, mentally, emotionally and that's really important you know there's no rush to have sex as well which is a major thing you know people rush into it and it's ridiculous because you know it's it's not this big amazing thing everyone thinks and it, you know it's a skill that has to be learned like everything people don't realize this sex is a skill you know there's better ways of doing it you know i've had sex with five guys one was good the four were rubbish do you know what I mean? There's certain things that the good, guy who was really good at it did that the other four guys didn't, you know? And so it, it's a skill. And if you want to, you know, if you do want to have sex, there are certain things you can do that will make it better for you even as an asexual person, you know? Because as an asexual person, if you're having sex, you still have to take care of your own needs. You might have a lot of physical needs, but you don't need the intercourse. So it's important that you get those physical needs met before you have the intercourse, you know what I mean? So it's really, really important. You know, it's all obviously the sensual stuff, the touching, the kissing. You know, as an asexual person, you might enjoy that, but just not enjoy the intercourse or maybe you're okay about having the intercourse you just don't know and so this book will really help you to decide whether you want to go ahead or not and it's a book I would highly recommend to anyone before someone even gets in that position but obviously if you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you're thinking about having it for the first time it's going to be an incredible book like I said I'm hoping to get it out before Christmas imagine being so ugly that you have to call yourself asexual so you're not made fun of well, asexuals aren't ugly. Asexuals are very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I get guys all the time after me. I get guys all the time after me. So, um, yeah, ugly and asexual definitely don't go together. And I know so many beautiful asexuals. So many gorgeous asexuals. So, yeah, asexuals are wonderful, you know, just because we don't experience sexual attraction doesn't mean to say we're ugly. We're just very um, faithful to our own bodies and faithful to ourselves, you know? So, yeah, and I'm happy with who I am. And so, you know, being asexual is the best feeling in the world. It's fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's great. So, yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream. I just wanted to reach out to you and say why I've spent five hours talking about sex. It wasn't in a bad way. It was a good way. It's to help other people out. You know, the guy that I interviewed for the book has just got the same vision for the book that I have, that it's literally, you know, it's a book that you really wished you'd had. If you already had sex, you really wished you had when you first started out, you know? when you first thought about having it, but you had no one to turn to. Do you know what I mean? Because let's face it, you don't really want to talk to your parents about it, do you? And magazines, really, they if you read magazines, they're very exaggerated. They're very fantasy. They're not reality of what it actually takes physically, mentally, emotionally. They don't go through all that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? So this is why this book's so important. And I know, I and you know, I think a lot of heterosexuals will read it as well because I think it's very relevant to them. And I think, you know, it will be so good for raising awareness of asexuality. 
because at the end of the day, that's the main difference between asexuals and someone who's not. Our difference is our attitudes, mindset, thoughts and feelings towards sex. And if we can get that cross in a book that's actually very helpful for both asexuals and even sexuals, then, you know, it's it's going to bode very, very well for asexuality. It's, you know, we're going to be taken more and more seriously what we always should be in the first place because asexuality is a genuine sexual orientation that's a lack of sexual attraction. So the reason me and me and Adam have spent all this time talking about it and you know, I want to thank Adam from the bottom of my heart. I mean, you know, this is a guy I've never met in person before. We've never spoke before apart from over emails um, during the course of the time of interviewing for the book. And, you know, for him to actually trust me with all that information, you know, and trust that I would do a great job of representing that information um, and, you know, and really believe in the book, despite the fact he's asexual, you know, and it and it is a book um about a guide to sex for asexuals, you know. It's it's just like incredible. And I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart and all the people that are taking part in the ace you know the asexual guide to sex book because it, I truly believe it's gonna be the best book on the market about sex ever written in in the entire history of the planet world and universe. I just do because I truly know that the the things in it are different to what I've ever seen before. I have never seen people ask these hard hitting questions, intimate details of people in this way, which is educational. It's not disgusting for the you know the sake of dis being disgusting. Obviously, there might be some stuff as an asexual you might feel repulsed by because you might be feeling, oh, that's gross because you haven't tried it or it puts you off. If it puts you off, the book's done its job because if you think at the end of the book you don't want sex, the book has helped you to decide that for yourself. Do you see what I mean? That's what's really good about this book. It will help you to make an informed choice and decision whether you want to try it or not. And I think that's, you know, that's what makes it so good. I cannot praise this book enough. I'm so excited about it. I never thought in my entire life I'd be excited about a book to do with sex because obviously I'm asexual, not interested in having sex personally. But this is not what the book's about. The book is about educating people about what sex is really like that it's still got you know things that are good about sex things that are not good about sex in it so you can you know you can actually see different perspectives you know you can see behaviors that might be good to do and it's really important because it goes through boundaries and you know the, the new version will go through like boundaries um creating boundaries when you how to how to get your own needs met as an asexual person within a relationship with a sexual, which I think is so important. You know, I think I think there's a lot of focus put on the satisfying the sexual person and not enough focus put on the asexual needs. You know, we all have a lot of our own needs and a lot of us have physical needs, even if we don't want the intercourse, you know, and a lot of them aren't rarely met. So um, I think it's really good. I just, you know, I'm try I'm gonna try and get it out for Christmas. I've still got to write a lot of my own part in it. Yeah, I've still, but the main thing is I get all the interviewees to to finish their questions and to actually make sure all their answers everyone can read, understand. Um, I like to do my books in like a, a conversational blog type of style that's really easy to read. So I'm really looking forward to um to sharing it all with you and you know it's worth me spending five hours talking about sex um on skype to get this book to you that is going to be so valuable and life-changing for so many people it's just gonna i truly believe it will save some people's lives or save some people some asexuals forget forget from getting into situations they don't want to be in because no one in society talks about this stuff, you know not your parents not your peers not your teachers no one talks about the 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 details that are in this book they just don't they don't talk about this stuff it's the like the the stuff that no one talks about that no one wants to own up to the the day by day details you know the nitty gritty you know and i think because you know like when i was talking to adam you know we were just having an intellectual educational relatable conversation with each other it wasn't like you know when sexuals talk usually and it's all about uh, you know all this disgusting like panting type of language and oh I've 
got to get my kit off and I want it badly. It's none of that because asexuals are not that way. We we can talk about sex in a very educational, informative way. And I think that's where our strengths are. I, I mean, I certainly have no problem in talking about it. You know, years ago, before I did this channel in 2015, I was so shy. I couldn't even talk about sex with anyone, not even my best friends, no one. And the only one I could talk to it about was my ex at the time when he wasn't my ex, you know. And, and that was like, you know, it's, it's really weird. It's like, um, do you know what I mean? It's like now I just talk about it. It's like war off a duck's back. It's like I just rolls off my tongue because I have no attachment to it emotionally whatsoever. I have no attachment to it at all. It's irrelevant to my life because I don't have it anymore. But it's relevant in the sense that I know a lot of people will try it, will have it, and they're scared and they feel lonely, upset and in pain. And they think they're the only ones that feel like that. And for asexuals, you know, they feel they're alone in their feelings towards sex. They asexuals feel they're a very, um, you know, I feel very isolated because they feel like they're the only ones who who don't experience this sexual attraction. They're the only ones who think weirdly about sex. They're the only ones who sex doesn't come naturally to. And that's what the book shows. It shows you're not alone. It shows that you're perfectly valid and fine to be thinking that way in your mind, to be thinking, you know, like, what do I do with my hands? Where do I put my body? Like, what am I meant to do? Like, what am I meant to feel? What am I meant to expect? You know, and it reassures the the reader that it's okay to not experience sexual attraction. And if you do want to try sex, that is okay too. And you, if you don't want to have it, that's fine. If you do want to try it, it's fine. But it, the book it shows you like to, you know ways that you can be more safe, ways you ways you can get your own needs met, ways that um you can logically think if it's right for you and and you can relate to the fact that yeah you might be having sex but your mind might be wandering off somewhere else because you're not you're that the sexual attraction doesn't magnetize you and keep you in the moment because you're not attracted to that so your mind will go off wandering about other things which is perfectly natural because you're not experiencing sexual attraction you're doing the physical stuff but you're not experiencing sexual attraction your mind's on other things that's probably more interesting to you or stuff you've done in the day do you know what I mean? I remember, you know, going back, that's what I was happened to me when I, I was having sex on my My mind was wandering onto other things like TV programs or so I used to watch TV back then, which I don't now, you know, and, and other things. And, you know, I mean, it's just wasn't it, it's wandering off because it's like, you know, I mean, I'm not really fussed about having sex. You know, if I'd had my way, if I had a guy that wasn't interested in sex, that'd be great. I mean, that's what I look for now, you know? because I don't feel that way. I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't have uh, any desire for it whatsoever. And I'd rather be doing other things. I'd rather be kissing and cuddling. I'd rather be having intelligent conversations, a nice chat about the world, planet, universe. I'd rather be developing myself, growing myself, you know, becoming a better version of me, you know. And um, I just think the book's going to be incredible, you know, and it was worth, you know, spending five over five hours talking about sex for the, an asexual guide to sex book. You know, it was just incredible because this book is going to help so many people. It's going to help asexuals to to make up their mind whether they want sex or not. It's going to help people who are even not asexual to decide whether they want sex or not. For people that are virgins, for people that have never tried sex, for people that are uneducated, they're shy, they're introverted about it. It's going to help spread awareness of asexuality as a sexual orientation. It's going to help people to see into our minds, to see how we're different, to see how we're made up differently to, to sexuals. I'm just so happy for this book and I'm just so happy that it's going to be so educational, so informative, and it's just going to tell it like it is. It's going to be a very bold, brave book and the best one you've ever seen on the market about sex, I'm telling you. Even though, ironically, it's written by asexuals who don't experience sexual attraction as a general rule, it's going to be the best book on sex ever written, seriously, because the people in, in it are amazing. It's not just because I'm writing it, it's because the people that tell their stories are incredible. If I was writing myself it would, and just me in it, it wouldn't be as good because I've got my own perspective. They've got different perspectives, all of them. And that's what makes it such a good book. You know, this book is like an introduction to sex for asexuals. You know, it's what asexuals think of love, life and sex. This is my book that's already out on Amazon, which the links are below if you want to grab a copy. And so, you know, there's different 46 asexuals I interviewed across the globe. And this gives a very good introduction into how asexuals think about sex, into what arousal means, what sexual attraction means, what sexual design means, what's the difference between all of them. You know, uh, it gives introduction to how asexuals, you know, live 
and survive with sex being all over the media and our society sexualized it gives introduction to how to love when you're asexual how to have a relationship when you're asexual so it re- and it shows you all the it shows you an immense diversity across the asexual spectrum well, actually without actually saying this is textbook definitions of what this asexual is and that asexual is because textbook definitions are all very well but they're very clinical aren't they so this tells it from the heart and that's what i like about asexual guide to sex book as well it's speaking from the heart you know the people that have written their answers the people that are in the book they speak from their heart so you can really feel them you can really sense that you're in their mind in <laughs> maybe even in their body but <laughs> experiencing it with them but um but you know that would be quite weird but um you never know so it's just really good i cannot praise it enough and i'm so grateful and thankful you know i know there'll be a lot of asexuals that might feel bad that i'm writing this book like why are you talking about sex when we've had enough of it we don't need it we don't want it why are you doing it i'm not doing it for me i'm doing it to help other people i mean i'm doing it for me as in the sense oh thank you for the thumbs up i do it for me in the sense that i want to write i love writing books for asexuals and I love spreading awareness of asexuality, but I'm not, I should say, I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for the people who need it. I know this book will sell. I even had a publisher, if you remember, interested in this book, right? His verdict was it wouldn't fit with their titles, right? Because it's too, it's too honest. If I'm honest, it's too honest. There's not enough censorship for the publisher to take it on for their titles, if you want to know. Do you know what I mean? The truth, right? But they said there is a market for the book and it will definitely sell. So I couldn't wish for anything more in that respect. That's a, a traditional publisher. These publishers have been going over 25 years. They approached me about this book, which I'm keeping under my own imprint. But you can buy it globally. You can just order it from a bookshop because I'm my own publishing company, or you can get it from Amazon, Asexual Perspectives. Just type Asexual Perspectives in. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just so proud of being able to write books for Asexual and be able to change lives, you know? Uh, do you know the amount of education I had about sex when I was a kid? I had one video in a physics lesson. Well, actually, it wasn't physics. It was biology, but the woman taught physics as well. So in a biology lesson, right, there was a video, the most corniest video you've ever seen explain sex, right? There was this woman dressed in an egg costume. So she had a costume all over her body with her arms popped out like this. <laughs> and all this egg costume around her and she was walking like this and then the guy was dressed in a sperm costume so his head's popping out the top of the sperm his body's in it and his arms are like out like this and he was wriggling towards the, the woman in the egg costume and it was like the the the, the, the she was singing one day my sperm will come. One day my sperm will come. Re- in this really creepy voice like that, right? And that was my sex education at, at secondary school. Nothing in primary school. That was it in secondary school. That was my sex education. How am I meant to learn about sex from that? What am I meant to do? It doesn't even say anything about precautions, you know what I mean? Like condoms and contraception, you know? And it's like, oh my God. And my mum and dad, they don't talk to they didn't talk to me about stuff like that. Even though they're not asexual, they don't even like you know, me mentioning anything to do with sex. It's like they get my they seem to get really embarrassed. And I'm thinking, for goodness sake, you're not even asexual. I'm the one who should get embarrassed if anyone should and worried about it, especially because you're my parents. But you know, I don't, you know, like I've changed myself. Uh that would scare you. What the video, Heather. Are you talking about the video, Heather? Because the video, that song, yeah, it is really scary. But I always remember it stuck in my brain because it's like you can't get it out of your brain. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, is this my sex education? This is all I'm getting. OMG, like, what the hell? And it's like, how are, how are people seriously supposed to manage pregnancy and and know about sex if that's all the education you get. And exactly, the woman's waiting for her sperm to come. Like, that's the most amazing thing in the world. That's a really bad message to send. Really bad message. Ear sex. That would be called ear sex. More like, more like earache to me, to be quite honest. Oh, my goodness me. 
but yeah, that was that was my sex education at school. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? And I know, and I know, even now, you know, probably in schools, there's not that much sex stuff taught. And to be honest, if you do, if you are thinking about sex, the last thing you're going to do is ask your teacher. Oh, teacher, I don't know this. Can you tell me this? And I really want to know this. And I really want to know that you don't. You don't want to say anything in front of other people. So you keep quiet. And there's so many questions you've got that this asexual guide to sex book will answer. Seriously, you know, even if you're a person who doesn't even want to try it, but you're curious to know how asexual thing, it's just going to be amazing. And it's going to be really, really revealing. I, I'm just so pumped about it. I can't believe how happy I am about sex, but I just, it's because it's so unique. It's because it's, I, to me, it's like nothing anyone will ever have seen on this planet before. I haven't read many sex books. As you mentioned, I haven't read any sex books. I do look at blogs sometimes because I try and like learn a bit to educate myself, but then I'm like, ugh. Like, yes, really? Because obviously I have to like do a bit of education for the book, as in the sense of like sometimes people talk about positions and I'm like, what the hell's that position? I've never tried that before. Or I try position, didn't even know what they were called. Music I heard is better than sex. Oh, music is definitely better than sex. Asexuals pretty much think cake's better than sex. Um, music's better than sex, music uh TV's better than sex. Films are better than sex. Everything's better than sex to asexuals, usually. The majority of us, anyway. Having said that, there are some asexuals in the book that don't mind sex. There are some asexuals in the book that might even like the experience of sex, right? So we have to appreciate that just because someone's asexual doesn't mean to say they're not going to enjoy the physical experience of sex. And I think that's another eye-opener as well as to how is that possible when you're asexual but the book will explain it from the mindset of the person who experiences that what it, it's like and so I just think I just honestly I'm so excited and pumped for this book I cannot believe it I just think it's going to take the world by storm I'm so excited I can't be more excited as you can tell it's like what um like nearly half past 11 at night and I'm just so excited and you know, like I said, when I was talking to the guy on Skype for over five hours last night, we were talking about sex, but in a very educational way. You know, not this creepy, disgusting way, but in, in an educational way and get into all the details, you know, that people need for this book, you know. And I don't know many people that would actually share this type of stuff, you know, but asexuals are so beautiful like that. You know, we we share stuff with the world to help inform people and make the world a better place to stop people from getting into. Well, we can't stop everyone, but to try and help people and prevent people from getting to situations that they don't know anything about. And it's very dangerous. You know, if if the lack of education about sex leads to unwanted pregnancies, it leads to STIs, STDs, it leads to rape, it leads to people's boundaries being being crossed over it leads to people's self-esteem going down it leads to people's um you know like self-worth lowered and all those type of negative stuff if they're not informed correctly about sex and and what you need to do for it to like prepare for it and what to expect and how you should feel about yourself and what boundaries you should put in place like, I didn't even know years ago what a boundary was I wasn't taught what a boundary is I wasn't taught anything like that, you know. I was kind of made to feel that you're lucky if anyone would fall in love with you. It leads to ovarian cancer. What is? Are you talking about um, sexually transmitted infections or diseases? Because some of them can. I know that, um, but there's other things that can as well. So, you know, or are you talking about sex itself? Like, uh, I mean, you know, I've had a lot of sex. Well, I haven't had loads. I mean sometimes I went two or three months without it thank god but um I've had a lot more than probably some asexuals have do you know what I mean and um you know it you know my last ex was really good about it and so it wasn't a bad experience per se but there were some times where I would cry afterwards because I didn't it wasn't really me it felt raw so there was times when I was okay with it and other times it was upsetting afterwards and I didn't really know why and obviously it's because I'm asexual if I'd have known that back then, I would have been able to forget about him and move on quicker, I think, because I stayed with him because I thought I'm never going to get someone who doesn't want sex all the time with me. 
if I'd have known about asexual sooner, I could have left the person that was really bad for me, but in other ways, but never mind. I've, you know, you learn things from every relationship, good or bad, I think. So it shapes you into who you are. So if I hadn't had those, all those different experiences, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. So I think everything happens for a reason. It's all good and great. Anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there because I've been live streaming here for 40 minutes. If you've got any questions, thank you, Barry, for coming on here. Um, it's really nice to see you on here, even though you're not asexual. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you, um, you know, like, um, being kind on this channel and learning from it. Thank you, Heather, again, not asexual, but support this channel. I really love it when people who are not asexual even support this channel. I do get quite a few sexuals lately commenting and messaging about the videos so it, you know i think they're helpful to them as well which is good i want to make better relationships with people you know whatever orientation you are it's really important you know love is love at the end of the day and i want us all to get along and be happy and feel comfortable anyway heather thank you so much for watching good night to you good night barry night night everyone lots of love to you all and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to this uh live stream to this channel if you subscribe to the channel you hit that bell icon there's a bell icon that will get you notified every time i go live right now or post a new video uh don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already and share it with any friends you think may benefit from it until next time brace your quirky and each other's i always say take care and i'll see you on the next live stream or video lots of love lots of love bye